Coming up, we'll take you back to Elkhart, Indiana and check out the 2016 open house and see what's new and exciting for 2017, including the Sylvan Sport Go, probably one of the most unique small camping trailers we have seen. And we'll see why it's important for you to torque and check the lug nuts on your trailer. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. At Rolling On TV, we know when fall arrives because it kicks off one of the RV industry's largest events, simply known as open house. Now, you notice I didn't call it a show, even though it may have the look and feel of a show, but it's not. And it also has the look and feel of a good old country fair. But then, it's not that either. It's simply the open house. It all started back in 2008 when Forest River decided to hold an event for its dealers at the factory and showcase its new models for the upcoming year. And of course, take some orders. The following year, Thor Industries decided to do the same thing and set up their event at and around the RV MH Hall of Fame Museum. Well, what has transpired over the last few years is a full-blown event where virtually every manufacturer from around the US and Canada shows up rents a piece of land and sets up their own outdoor display. Now, here's the kicker. Who's in charge? Actually, no one. You heard right. There is no one person or organization responsible for this event. Each manufacturer does their own thing from product displays to food and entertainment. Here you'll find plenty of great food from simple corn dogs to gourmet dinners including lobster, prime rib, and everything in between. And of course, everyone has bars set up. And at night, there's even top name entertainment. At the open house, you'll find everything from large Class A motorhomes to unique pint-sized camping trailers. And this year, there were even RV accessory and component manufacturers with displays. I can only imagine that next year's open house will be even bigger and better. Now, let's catch up with Bob Zagami from RV Insights who's filling in for Jeff Johnston this week. Bob Zagami here with Rolling On TV and we're in Elkhart, Indiana this week at the Big Dealer Open House and I'm with Tom Dempsey, the president and the Design director of Sylvan Sport, a tremendous multifunctional vehicle and RV for the camping population. For uh, Tom, how do you describe it? You designed it. Uh, take a look at this uh, functional value that you put into this coach. Well, sure, Bob. Thank you. Uh, at Sylvan Sport, we set out to reinvent the RV and really take it out of the RV world and put it into the REI world, I like to say succinctly. So we made a, an entry-level premium camper for the outdoor adventure. You know what I find very interesting with it, and I followed your progress over the last few years, this brings people into our industry that were never there before. You know, we, we always like to talk about the RVers and they, they buy more RVs, and they buy t 10 trailers, and then they go to motorhomes. But this is really designed, I think, for those 33 or 35 million tent campers that are out there that want to move up any, maybe into an RV, but this gives them a, step, a nice stepping stone to come into our industry that will then later on maybe get them into a trailer or a motorhome, but it gets them off the ground, it's really easy to set up, it's affordable. Am I right on, and you know, where you picking that? Yeah, that's right. Uh, our typical customer kind of falls into two camps. The, uh, what I call the maturing adventurer that wants to step it up, as you said, off the ground and bring along all their kayaks and bicycles and boats and whatnot and uh, sleep off the ground in comfort. It also appeals to the folks that want to simplify. 
So we actually have a good group of buyers that uh, have owned a conventional RV and they want to actually downsize and have a little more uh, multifunctional vehicle that's a little simpler in terms of ownership and maintenance and whatnot. And so we're enjoying both of those customer groups. Well, it's very interesting. And one of the other things that I really love about your company is you make everything that's on this product and you make it in America. This is a true made in America product for RV enthusiasts and for outdoor enthusiasts. It is. You know, not only do we make it in America, but we really try to make it locally. Uh, about 80% of the cost of a Sylvan Sport Go is made within a 100-mile radius of Brevard, North Carolina. So uh, if we don't make it in our factory, it's made generally fairly nearby. Okay, now when you look at the unit, it's a tall unit. You're a tall guy. Tell us how that came about. Well, as an industrial designer, you know, I'm used to the world being designed for the 5th to 95th percentile. And I just happen to be about 99.9 .9 percentile, as I recall, in terms of height. So I was being a little bit selfish when, uh, when first creating the Go and making it accommodate me not only laying down in the beds, but also standing up inside. So for a compact unit, it opens up into a big space. How about weight-wise and tow? We always, you know, all the RV manufacturers now want to make lightweight units that are towed by smaller cars and SUVs and half-ton pickups. I suspect maybe anything could tow this. You bet. Just about any vehicle can tow the Sylvan Sport Go. It weighs 840 pounds. It can carry another 800 pounds of cargo on the deck, 200 pounds on the roof racks. So it's a very compact, lightweight, you know, well-engineered piece of gear. Uh, that we have, we have folks that tow it, as I said, with even hybrids. Well, now I'm not a motorcycle guy, but could you tow it with a motorcycle? Well, the Go is a little large dimensionally for a motorcycle, but we also make the Sylvan Sport Go Easy, which is a 274 pound trailer, which is motorcycle towable. That's amazing. Exciting. Now, what, when you get to the campsite or you know, you're by the lake or in the mountains, what does it take to set something like this up? From completely closed, rolling in in your vehicle to set up in comfort with a king size and a half bed is uh, eight to ten minutes. Total. Total time. And then you're out fishing, or you're on the bike, and you're up in the mountains. Then you're lighting your campfire or uh, getting dinner going. Yep, indeed. Do you, do you, you know, it, it is such a new thing. Do you find that you have actually groups of people that go out together because they like the outdoor lifestyle? And this is true of millennials. You know, they, they want their mashups and they want to get, to, they get together at a moment's notice. They'll send a text to somebody and say, I'm going to the mountains this weekend. Do you see 10 of them going out with these and, and having a good time? We're definitely seeing growing numbers. Uh, we have a great uh, owners group online right now. So, and uh, it's, it's, you know, adding members every single day and adding events and stories and that sort of thing. And certainly with more and more Sylvan Sport Goes out in the field, more and more Sylvan Sport Go owners are camping in groups out there. And, and we actually are going to be encouraging that through having a, uh, an owner's rally down in the, uh, the mountains of North Carolina coming up soon. How about the materials, the canvas materials, the tenting? And it, it's all inside there. That's what I find amazing when you look at it and then all of a sudden pops out and you've got this beautiful camper. What about the materials? Well, you're, you're right. People are most amazed when we tell them there's a king size and a half bed and all the shelter in this little thin silver pod here. So uh, when you open it up, canvas is a little bit of an old fashioned word because we use a 220 denier polyurethane coated ripstop polyester. So it's the finest material uh, available. It's super heavy duty. Um, and it's made in a factory where we, you know, some of the world's best, most demanding tents for applications like conquering Everest are made. So it also uses uh, DAC poles, which are high-grade aluminum poles made for quick deployment and again, super strength and durability in the toughest conditions. That's amazing. We're going to take a little break right now and when we come back, we're going to show you how easy it is to set it up and, and see the functionality that Tom has built into the Sylvan Sport Go. 
Thetford's tough new Titan sewer hose is virtually uncrushable. Ever had your sewer hose run over by an RV? Watch Titan bounce back. Titan hose is made of Thetford's proprietary blend of TPE and provides the highest degree of puncture and abrasion resistance. It has an easy to grip fitting for a leak free connection to RV outlets. A rotating elbow easily aligns and allows a convenient connection and straighter flow. Titan provides more for your money and is another innovation from Thetford, the RV sanitation leader. When you have a Truma AquaGo instant hot water system, you can expect to make a lot of new friends. So the Sylvan Sport Go is pretty lightweight. What's nice is you really can roll it around by hand to get it in a nice position for camp. And when you're in position, it uh, cranks up. And Earl is going to show you how uh, you can raise the Go up. We're going to convert it into the mode from compact travel to how you would uh, carry an ATV or a motorcycle or lots of bicycles or whatever cargo you might have. So you'd raise it up about this high, secure the side panels. At this, at this point, you can load if you have a, uh, a large vehicle or something like that. It might be an, an ATV or a couple of dirt bikes. Uh, or even a large Harley. And what's nice is there's a pin that pulls up front. This step can be removed. And you can tilt this. And you can drive your ATV or motorcycles right up onto the deck. What's really cool is there's a hydraulic damper that prevents this thing from slamming down. So as I go up over center with my heavy ATV or my motorcycles and the weight begins to shift, it does a nice controlled drop. Once I've got things loaded, we can lower the top back down onto these pins. And she's ready to roll. Now we'll be going into uh, camper mode on the uh, Go Camper, and uh, I'm gonna have my assistant here, Kyle Munt, to help me out here. Pretty easy to uh, actually to assemble the unit to go into camper mode. There's a uh, keyway <clears throat> on the top of the uh, bed pole. You actually just put that in and oh, man, oh. give it a quick turn. Give it a quick turn here. And then, you want to bring out, you actually want to do the same thing on this end, you want to turn it and lock it in place, and you want to do the same thing on this end, lock it in place, and now you have the, uh, the bed panels. The cool thing about the bed panels is that you, actually, you can, uh, 500 pounds of weight can actually lay on this particular bed on each side. And also the beds will actually go into a full size bed as well as a king size bed. So the next step when you're actually going into camper mode, next thing you want to do is uh, pull down your license plate holder, which is also your step. And then, which is the magical moment within the Go Camper, we always call it the Abracadabra. You come up here, you pull the lever, and now you have the unit goes into camper mode. All the bedding, all the panels, everything that you need to be to make this unit a total camper is located inside this gray pod. I know it sounds pretty unbelievable, but at the end of the day, that's exactly what this unit does. You walk around, you grab the end of the, uh, the size of the pod here, you lower it down, and then you actually give it a nudge to give it a, some bracing there. Once you do that, you start to attach the camper part to the unit here, very easy to do. As you can see, if there's a, uh, any of there, you see hooks, 
You can actually, uh, it shows you where to hook the cables. Do the same thing here. And also on the other side. The next thing you do is you want to go into your uh, total camper mode, just like you would do in any other tent. What I love about this is it gives you an opportunity not only to be off the ground with the go camper, but just thread the unit, just like you're threading just a regular tent. Take your time here. It's a really doable tent. And then you put it in the grommet, and you want to push straight up in the air to give you the total go tent feel. And we do the same thing on the other side. As you can see, it makes it really easy. And as you push straight up, you actually put the end of the tent pole in this grommet. It's really easy to give you a sturdy tent there. And the last step for the camper, you actually want to uh, make the door for the unit. What's really cool, what we've done to show you how easy it is to, uh, to assemble the door, as you can see, we have the orange uh, casing here to let you know that where that actually goes gives our customers an easier way to find the pocket it actually goes and allows you to assemble the door. So as we finish up getting the door in place for the Go Camper, then we step up in our step, we walk inside, and we actually say bye-bye, get ready for the uh, Go Camper to close the door. We'll get back to the Solvent Sport Go right after this short break. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at Jayco.com or just log on to RollingOnTV.com. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norcole RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norcole.com. And now I'm going to show you some of the great features of the interior of the Go. So what we've tried to create here with the Go is the best tent camping experience you could ever have. We've uh, kept all the good features and designed out all the bad features. So you're 13 inches off the ground, you're perfectly level, perfectly stable. You have six different possible configurations on the inside. You have all the headroom you can imagine at six foot five. You have beds that are on nearly seven feet. You can make it out into a king and a half size bed, it looks like this. I'd like to show you some of the details. We have two panels, and they allow you to have a table set up so you can enjoy a meal all day long. You keep it set up like this. At night, you bring the other panel down, which stores up here, and you drop it down into the gap. It includes four air mattresses. These are beautiful, thick, comfortable, self-inflating air mattresses. They go across, and they make it into one big king and a half size bed. We have all kinds of storage options. We have a, a unit that hangs on the uh, back wall here. You can see it behind the TV. We have one that goes up here, a gear loft. We have pockets. We have all kinds of space down below. With this panel, you can put one across the beds here and give you a two-tier shelving system. We partnered with Goal Zero. 
and created a fantastic solar kit so you can have an off-the-grid power solution for your entire trip. This unit travels in the front storage box and charges while you're traveling. You bring it inside and plug in phones, devices, even laptops, DVD players. Um, it's a perfect solution when you don't have an AC outlet at a campground. Coming up next, we'll see why it's important to torque and check the lug nuts on your trailer. We'll be right back. Never run out of propane again. With level check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. For 50 years, Campers and RV has been your trusted resource for RV sales, service, and accessories. Now, with 15 locations along the East Coast from New Hampshire to Florida, We'll be giving you that same family-friendly service and be your trusted resource for another 50 years. For information and locations, visit us online at campersin.com. If your RV is outfitted with cast aluminum wheels instead of steel wheels, there's an aspect of maintenance that gets overlooked but really shouldn't be. This is a safety item that you really ought to pay attention to. And that is retorquing the nuts after you've had some work done on the, on the vehicle. If there's any reason why you've had to have the wheels come off, whether it's uh, uh, replacing the bearings, uh, repacking the bearings, just you know, doing brake work, whatever, they reinstall the wheels and they torque them down, of course, at the shop. But an aluminum wheel like this does not have the ability to compress like a steel wheel does. A typical steel wheel has a raised area directly behind the lugs. And that raised area compresses a little bit and holds on to the lugs sort of like a lock washer. An aluminum wheel doesn't do that. It's a solid block of aluminum that does not compress at all. So you tighten down the lugs at the shop, but they're still going to take a little bit of time for them to seat completely. But the trick is you should check this. 10 miles after you leave the shop, 25 miles, 50 miles, and then maybe every 100 miles for a little while, just to make sure. Now you can use a regular socket wrench without any problem, but it's a good idea, it's not that expensive, get yourself a torque wrench and figure out by way of your owner's manual or the manufacturer website what the correct torque setting is in foot-pounds for these nuts. Now in this case, we have the wrench set to about 110 p, uh, foot pounds approximately. And what we do after we get on the road, we stop at a rest area or someplace, like I say, maybe 10 miles down the road, and go around and you check using your standard uh, approved tightening pattern. You check the tightness on all the lugs. because these guys are going to work a little bit loose while you're heading down the road. All you need to do is carry the lug wrench in your vehicle with an extension as needed so you got a little room to work, the correct size deep socket to fit your socket, your lugs, and again, after the first 10 miles when you leave the shop, 25 miles, 50 miles, then maybe every 100 miles for a few hundred miles after that. Check them every morning before you leave the campground. Uh, might be one of the things that you do when you stop in for gas, for example. It's a really quick and easy way to avoid a disaster with having your wheels come loose, fall off the vehicle on the road. And that is your Rolling on TV safety tip for the day. We hope you enjoyed this week's show and for additional information on anything you saw on the show along with additional videos and stories, visit our website at RollingOnTV.com. You can also follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. As usual, this has been another fun production. For the latest up to the minute RV news, visit our media partners at RVBusiness.com. 
If you're into RVing or just appreciate vintage vehicles, be sure to set your GPS for the RV MH Hall of Fame in Elkhart, Indiana. This museum houses the largest collection of vintage RVs and trailers dating as far back as 1916. For more information, visit their website at rvmhhalloffame.org.